Okay, today we're going to be looking at an FRQ problem um, that's dealing with integrals, volume and area, and area between curves and stuff like that. Um, I'm kind of sick, so just forewarning. Anyway, so here's the problem down below, and I drew the graph above. So the first thing we're going to be doing is finding the area of the region R, and that's the highlighted region. Finding the volume when it's revolved around the x-axis, so volume. And then this is going to be a cross-section. It's going to be a square, and you're going to find the volume. And then again, find the volume, but this time we're going to rotate around the y-axis instead of the x-axis. And then lastly, we're going to find perimeter. All right, so the first thing you probably want to do if, when you get this problem is find the intersection points so you know what the limits of integration are. In this case, since the area is, or since the area is shaded from zero, you know that you're going to integrate from zero, but to the intersection point. And that intersection point is here. Now, it may appear to look as one, but if you type it into your calculator, um, you would actually get uh, zero point, here I'll just, zero point nine four two, and the y is point four one two. So, a lot of people would probably make a mistake about putting the intersection point as 1, but it actually isn't. So make sure you check that and when you have a graphing calculator. All right, so moving on, we're going to find the area. So since we found the x or the intersection points, and you know you're going to integrate from the limits of integration, so and since we're uh, finding the area with respect to x, you should probably define the x coordinate of the intersection point to be a letter. I usually put the letter and then box it. And when you're taking the AP test, you, you definitely want to define what your value is. And I believe it was 0.942. So instead of writing 0 to 0.942, whatever it was on your calculator, uh, you can just put 0 to A or 0 to whatever letter it makes you feel comfortable. So uh, knowing limits of integrate or knowing how to find the area between uh, two curves, you know you're going to take the top. Uh, function minus the bottom function and then integrate from 0 to a in this case and that's what we're going to do so it looks something like this so as you can see uh, we took the top function which was e to the negative x squared minus the bottom function and we integrated from 0 to a so we would be integrating in this direction from 0 to that intersection point here and adding up uh, or finding the area. Now, once you put that in your calculator, let me see, you would get 0 0.591. And I always put this, but you guys don't have to. Even on the AP test, you won't get credit or anything, but units squared, just so I know that it's area I found and I'm clear on the concept and just understanding what exactly I did. And that is the answer to part A, which was finding the area in the region R. Part B says find the volume of the solid when it's rotated about the x-axis. So uh, here's the x-axis right here, all the way through. And if we were to take this area and we were to rotate it this direction, uh, it would have the same pattern here, look like this, and then here's the area, but it would be a three-dimensional figure, right? So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing you want to uh, find out is, I usually just draw these rectangles here for integration purposes. And what has, so when we rotate it, we're creating a circular um, basically region that we're going to add up pretty much an infinite or a certain number of circles because imagine this as the radius or at least one side of the rectangle from the x-axis to the to the function is a radius and since um, we're rotating over the x-axis it's going to be the function minus the uh, distance between the x-axis or the function it would just be f the function minus zero because it's not like you're rotating it about uh, one half or something where you'd have to where there'd be a difference 
and rotation in terms of coordinates and stuff like that. So let's look at this right here. So the formula for finding volume when rotated about the x-axis is the integral from a to b times pi times big R squared minus r squared dx. A lot of people make the mistake is that they just square r minus r squared, but make sure each individual r is squared. All right, so let's just use that formula, and so we're still going to be integrating from 0 to the intersection point, because uh, we are doing this with respect to x, and we are rotating about the x-axis. So then we would just keep moving on, and we would plug in pi, and then our capital R squared back here would be this region. And... Um, What's, what is that touching is touching the green curve, so that would be e to the negative x squared. So let's go over there, and same thing for the little r, we'll make this little r. Um, that would be 1 minus cosine x. So let's go over here and type that in. So see, the capital R was e to the negative x squared, and you square that entire um, function, and then you subtract the bottom function, which was 1 minus cosine x, and then square that. Then in, And then we already know, integrate. And basically, uh, you would, after you punch in your calculator, you would get 1.747. And uh, since it's volume, I just put units cubed, since there are no given units, in, but it's just me. And you box that, and that is your answer. So... Let's move on to C. All right, so cross-sections. Cross-sections are generally pretty easy once you understand what exactly you're doing. Um, it says that we are um, the cross, so the volume that we found, imagine cutting that in, like, in half in slices, like a loaf of bread or a piece of steak or whatever, and when you would cut it, it would make a square in this case. It's telling you that you're going to use squares. So integration is adding up an infinite number of things and this the things that we're adding up are the areas of a square so area of a square and we know the area of a square to be um, side squared right so side squared so using that we can find the volume of the region if it was cut or of the region if it was in squares and it would make a really interesting shape, and I wish I could show you it on here, but you kind of need to see that in real life to get the full picture. So let's do the same thing. We're going to integrate from A to B, or 0 to A in this case. And it would be side squared, right? But you have to figure out what is the length of A side. So let's go back and find out. So the length of the side would just be if it was this region right here just between the curves and it would the square would be popping out like this but it looks really flat so it would kind of be sticking up okay it looks really bad but you get what I'm saying like one of the sides here is the area between the green curve and the blue curve which is you know that so how do you find that well it's just subtract the top function minus the bottom function so this one's the top one even though it's written on the bottom but you see it's the highest one between 0 and our intersection point here, or there. Um, and then that's this, um, what area, or no, that's just the length of one side. So going back here, you know the length of one side is e to the negative x squared minus 1 minus cosine x, and that's just the length of one side. But what is the formula for um, f for finding the area of a square? Side squared, right? So here's side. So all you have to do now is square the entire thing. And that's that. And make sure uh, you integrate. So you're using integration, so dx with respect to x. And what you would get is 0 0.461 units cubed. And that, my friends, is your answer. 
So see all like if you have a cross section in general, it's when you're given a shape, just find know what the area of the shape is or how to find the area of pretty much a, like it's a triangle, a square, or whatever. Um, and then you would just use that formula, and going back to the graph, you would just pretty much figure out the length of a side, base, height, whatever, and use that formula, and then integrate. All right. Kind of, you know, it's a pretty long video, so let's make these next ones pretty quick. Uh, this one will take a lot of explanation, maybe not. All right, we'll see. Um, so now we're going to find the volume when the graph is rotated about the y-axis. So let's go back here. Um, it's saying if the graph was rotated instead of this way, like last time, it's going to be rotated this way. So the graph, if it continued, would look um, like this, whatever, and here's the R region, or the highlighted region, but I'll skip that. So that's what we're going to have to find. But since we're flipping about the y-axis, we're going to have to uh, integrate with respect to y. So this is in uh, like y equals mx plus b or like just with respect to x but we want to make x by itself so that's respect to y. So you're going to have to solve for these two um, equations and just solve for x uh, instead of having it y equals you want to have x equals. Another thing since we're going with respect to y this value here is now important because we're going to be integrating upwards instead of to the right. So now we're going to be integrating from the height of 0, so 0, to the height of, or, oh crap, never mind. One second. Okay, sorry about that. Let's just, before we go back there, let's just um, solve for x for each function since we are mm -hmm. doing this with respect to y. We want to make sure it's x equals uh, the function. So how do we get x by itself for y equals e to the x? negative x squared. Uh, take the ln of both sides and the exponent would come out so you get negative x squared equals the ln of y. Divide by mm -hmm. a negative you would get negative ln y equals x squared. Take the square root and you get x equals plus or minus square root of negative ln y. And since we're only using the positive region, uh, we can just ignore that. Now, it may seem uh, like the answer is wrong, seeing you have a negative under the radical. But it's actually right because the graph of ln of x looks something like this, right? And this intersection point here is 1. So an ln or a log is pretty much an exponent, like it deals with exponents. So everything here is technically, uh, the value would be negative. So if you, t and negative here is pretty much opposite. So the opposite of the negative values here um, would be positive, right? So that's all it's saying. It's saying the square root of the opposite values of the ln less than 1 because the values we're plugging in are going to be uh, less or less than 1. So uh, that just is why it's okay. So let me fix that. Okay. So now let's solve for the other one over here. Okay. So first thing I guess we could do is just subtract one of both sides um, and then you get y minus one equals negative cosine x and then uh, I would divide the negative and I would actually get rid of the cosine so what you would do is the inverse of cosine and that would be uh, let's see this would be cosine inverse of 1 minus y, since we distributed the negative, uh, equals x. So those are the two um, functions that we would be using since we're doing this with respect to y. So let me just... Okay, so now let's just look back at the graph. Um, so when we're integrating with respect to x, we usually go... Uh, we draw the rectangles upward. Uh, for y, you draw them sideways. 
And we know that since this is the top function, this would be the square root of negative ln y function that we solve for. And this would be the co inverse cosine of 1 minus y. And that line represents, uh, I guess, the infinite number of rectangles that we could integrate with. And notice how um, the we're going to have to pretty much make two um, integration problems and then add them together because the corresponding height value would be different because if you integrated with for just cosine y, 1 minus y, you would keep going, draw lines, draw lines, draw lines, and it would stay on the y. But since you're integrating between two, uh, and same thing with this way too, you'd be, oh, you'd be going here, here, and here outside the region what we want. So you're going to integrate this region first plus this region here. So, and remember we're rotating it this way, and since we're rotating, it kind of causes the circle, so got to use pi here too. So just going back here, I wrote the original functions that we solved for. And what we're going to do is uh, find the volume, and finding the volume, I'll just write the formula here real quick. So what we're doing is we're integrating from 0 to C, and C is the intersection point uh, that we calculated that of the two curves, or of the two functions. And that's the Y value. So that would be this value right here uh, is the C. So I defined that. You could see right here. Ha -ha. Um, and R1 is radius 1, and that is the lower radius. So this would be R1 here, and this would be our R2 the purple line, because uh, we're going to be, this would be the radius, and here would be the circle, and yada, yada. But, um, so we'd have to integrate from 0 to C for that function. Like I explained, if you kept drawing the radii, uh, it would be different for each function past that point. So that's why you got to integrate, you got to separate the, um, you have to make two separate functions or split it or however you want to say it, but you can't just do from 0 to 1. You have to do 0 to the intersection point to the intersection point to 1 because 1 in this case, this is supposed to be at 1, but I just drew it kind of bad, but still okay. All right, so what you would get, all right, so that's what it would look like uh, when you put it all together. And so if you just look at this part alone, or just the first part right here, um, that value would be 0.559, and that represents the volume if it was rotated for this region, and if it was rotated, so it would be about there too, and that just represents that portion of the volume, and the other portion, this side, same thing, over here, it would be this volume, and then since it's rotated, it would also be over here, too. So it would represent that region for the volume. Um, so, once you add those two together, uh, you should get approximately 1.259. For me, units, cube, whatever. Um, and that should be your answer. Okay. Last one, I'll make this one really quick since it doesn't really have a lot of explanation needed. To find perimeter, basically, uh, you have to know the values of the arc length for each formula. And the formula for arc length is integrating using this formula. Um, so going back here, we want to find what the perimeter of this region is, so the blue to the green. And everyone forgets, so please do not forget this, you also got to include the uh, y-axis. So you kind of are creating a, a shape that looks like this, and you want to find the perimeter of that region. So to do that, uh, a shortcut kind of way to do this is define um, f of x and g of x. So let's just make f of x equals the first one and g of x the second, so your choice, but I'll just define them real quick. So if you could do it this way, just make sure you define them, uh, your functions to be like that. And then all you would do is uh, find the arc length of 
that of this function, the arc length of that function from, the, from those regions, so that's where your integration comes from, for those regions, um, and then make sure you add 1, all right, because that's the value of the y axis, too, so make sure you include that, so I'm just going to write that real quick. All right, so you get this, uh, basically you're adding the y axis perimeter side, this would be the e to the x, and remember doing with respect to x, so 0 to a, so for the perimeter that would look like this, it was the x coordinate of the intersection point. Um, then you would do the same thing, but for the cosine, you would just do 0 to a as well, and that would be your perimeter, and for each value, so the perimeter for each one is, uh, you would get these values for what the value of the perimeter uh, is for each part that we split it up to, and that would be approximately, since we are using this on a calculator, 3.18, that would be technically units squared, or no, just units. See, that's why I like to know exactly what I'm doing, because it's perimeter. So, that would be your value. Sorry for the long video, but I uh, hope this helped.